Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Guys, we have another Key Spice video today. You know, the maker of Key Spice. He's the same one that uh, came up with LT Spice. Now, Mike has got Key Spice and says, so sure, you guys want one? I'll tell you more about that than the video, okay? Uh, we're gonna do a quick video. I had a, somebody write in and they had a question and they used microcap and LT Spice and, and Q Spice, and they couldn't get quite the right answer. And I think this might help clear it up, okay? So hopefully it does. Let me know if you guys have any questions. But this might be a good way to start learning how to use Q Spice and just another uh, video on Q Spice. And uh, I've done a couple of interviews with Mike Engelhart, the designer of Q Spice, LT Spice, and hope you guys like this. Let's jump into it. Hey guys, this is uh, just basic circuit, basic LR. So I've got a voltage source and I've got the sine thing here. Now, when I go into this, if I was going to, if I was going to edit this, as soon as I go into this field, it gives me kind of the layout um, on how to fill it in. And since these numbers are already filled in, it's already showing me those. So if I backed up, so right now it's, um, here, let's do this again. So see the offset, I'll say uh, zero. And then voltage amplitude, we're gonna go to 10. And then frequency 60 Hertz, okay? So it just gives you this, little thing here to explain how to set it up so instead of having a pop-up menu you fill in it makes it you know simple fast once you're used to this kind of stuff here's five ohm resistor here's a 10 millihenry inductor and then i've assigned this net this connection here to out and this is in so see if i just move these around they're kind of connected right now that little dot right there if you can see it all right and then i have my ground which you always have to have in the simulation you have to have a reference point so when it says what's this voltage it's in reference to this and then it's gonna be a transient 0 0.1 same kind of thing if i come to this field if i start to try to edit it it'll give me like all the stuff i can do okay so this is just a simple circuit that you can, uh, you know, I can give you, you can email me and you can just play with these values and, and, you know, experiment. Okay. So then after that, what I want to do is when I do the simulation, I want to plot and I'm going to do a, a V1. This is a current in V1 and I'm doing the minus sign. That's for a reason, okay? I have to explain that. But minus um, I and R2, okay? So, and then minus I and L1, okay? And then VN, and these are all, you have a commas in between each one of these things you want to plot. And then VN minus V out. So VN minus V out. So the voltage across R2, so that's the voltage across this resistor. And then V out, so that's the V out reference to this. And V in, in reference to this, the reference, okay? So we're gonna look at all these currents. And now, let me just explain. The minus sign is to get the right polarity of the current. And I'll explain that in a little bit. Let's just go look at what the plots look like okay so i come up here i say hit run and you see it turn red and then pop up and there's the plots now there's a bunch of stuff going on over here on the left we have voltages you can see the scale from minus 10 to 10. over on the right we have currents two amps to two amps minus two amps now you can see the red current here we only see three waveforms even though i have six six things three voltages and three currents right and that's because a current, it's a series circuit. So the current's gonna look the same everywhere. And that's just what I wanted to show. I have the inductor, I have the R2 and the V1 currents. So if I hit V1, there's the current in V1. 
and by hit that current in R2, you see the blue one. So you can see that these guys, see these two here, green and blue, they're just on top of each other. And if I go up to the current in L1, just on top of each other, okay? Now, let me look at, show you the schematic again. All right, so in the schematic, uh, the current going through the circuit, now the current going through resistor, it's gonna have volts drop. Now look, one thing if I hesitate over this, it's already done running, so it's not, it's showing zero amps because there's nothing running right now. But guys, so, the uh, the current through resistor and the and the voltage across the resistor are in phase because there's no phase shift. It's not an inductor. The current and the voltage through an inductor are going to be 90 degrees off, right? It's Eli the Iceman. So inductor is Eli. So that's voltage ahead of current. So we expect to see the voltage 90 degrees ahead of the current. Because first you have voltage, then it pushes the current through finally. So it's 90 degrees out of phase. Okay. But the current and voltage across these other two are in phase. So let's go back and look at the plots again. Click over here. So see now here's the voltage across that resistor, Vn minus V out. So if I click on that, you notice how the if I come up over here, let's say the resistor is blue. Okay. Now see this blue waveform? It's gonna turn to this color as soon as I click it because they're on top of each other. They're in phase. And they scaled them just by chance to be the same. I could change the scale over here so that they would be offset a little bit, you know, and 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 right now the scale is set there. So if I did come over here, I could change the scale to say plus uh, 12 volts, for instance, and minus 12 volts. And all I did is double click on the side. So now we're up to 12 and minus 12. So now you can see uh, separation. Red is the current and underneath it, blue is, um, or I mean this color right here is underneath the red one, right? And so you can see they're in phase right on top of each other, just like you expect. And you know what? I can hold my cursor down and just zoom in on a couple waveforms so it makes it a little bit easier to see these waveforms. So the red one is the current. And if I click at the top of the current, down here at the bottom, if you look down here at the bottom of the screen, when I click my cursor, you'll see it says uh, 9.7 volts because that's on the voltage scale, but I'm really trying to see what the current is, right? And it says 1.596. And if I get a little bit closer, it's like 1.6, 1.606 amps, okay? And if you do, uh, you know, the calculations by hand, you'll come up with something very similar to that. All right, so those things are in phase. Now let's look at the input voltage. So the input voltage is this brown one. And so the voltage, so if I look at the zero line, come over here, let's see if I double click, I think I can turn on the grid. Okay, there's the grid. So if I come over here, see where the voltage right here crosses zero? So the voltage starts to go up on the input and on the output, it's over here as well as the current. So the output current is over here. So it's Eli the Iceman, right? So since we have an inductive circuit, it's gonna be voltage and then current later. And it's not 90 degrees because we have a five ohm resistor in there. So the resistor, is if it was the circuit looked super resistive, everything would be in phase. If it looked super inductive, it'd be 90 uh, degrees off, but somewhere in between, you know, so that's where it falls in place, okay? Now, the voltage on the output is over here. So you can see the voltage in the inductor starts here 90 degrees later. See the peak of the waveform comes down here, the current starts to go through. So the blue waveform is the voltage and the current's right here, 90 degrees off. So the voltage on the output, for current through the output, 90 degrees. But voltage on the input and current on the output, 
not 90 degrees. There's less because of the resistor helps bring it towards being in phase. So it brings it this way. Okay. Just wanted to show you that. I'll show you the math. And that, but yeah, you could click on the voltage. We're, we got 10 volts is what I said we were going to put in. And the voltage on the output is right at 6 volts. You can see it right there at that line. And when we do the math, you'll see that that comes out right. So there we go. Just want to show you the simulation. Real simple way to start playing with circuits and, and simulating things so you can see what happens. Okay, if I come over to resistor and if I just double click... Then I go back to the simulation. All I'm seeing is the current to that. So that's how you can just uh, change what the plot said. When I said plot in the schematic and I ran it, plots all that. But when I double click on a, any component, it'll just show me that component. Okay, now if I come over here and click on the L, now it's going to plot that one too. So you can see the I, both eyes are the same because they're on top of each other, right? It's a series circuit. So if I plot on, if I click on V1, same thing. Let's come back right here. So there's V1. Okay. Now you see V1's opposite, but look at this minus sign. And these are plus. So that was 180 degrees out of phase. Ink. Okay, guys, got my whiteboard up here. Let's see if uh, I can walk you through some of the math and you know, some of the stuff we saw in the simulation, okay? Just real quick. We have a 10 volt source and sine of zero degrees, you know, it just starts off at zero. So 10 at zero volt, and then resistor, five ohms, and inductor, 10 millihenries, all right? Over here, I do some math to come up with uh, what the impedance is of this. So it's X of L, right? X of C would be a capacitor. And an inductor is 90 degrees phase shift from a uh, resistor, right? From the current causes a, a lag in current, 90 degrees. So we have this right here, and it shows the impedance of the inductor is going to go up 90 degrees. Resistors just on the origin, you know, it's just on the x axis and it's showing 5 ohms, 0 degrees, right? Okay, so x of L is equal to 2 pi FL. So that comes out to 3.8 ohms, 90 degrees. And that's what I'm showing up here. Then what we want to do is I want to break it down and put it in rectangular form, you know, where we have. Uh, so, so what we have is we have the 3.8 sine of 90 and sine of 90 is 1. So it's a J. That's the imaginary because it's not on the X axis. So... It comes out, um, resistor is five times the cosine of zero degrees, which is just five. It's just one. So we end up with five ohms and uh, J 3.8 ohms. Okay. So that's our rectangular coordinate of our Z, our impedance, which combines R's and X's. Okay. So then I rewrite it over here. And then put in a polar form, I have to square this, square this, and take the rectangle, or the square root. I have to square this, square this, and then take the square root of that, which comes out 6.28 ohms. So if we combine these things, now we have this. Um, You know, so if we combine this, we got 5 ohms this way, 3.8, and we draw a, a box and go up into the corner, it would be 6.28, okay? So that's how long that would be. So um, now to find the angle, we take the y over the 3.8 divided by the 5 and take the arc tan, and it comes out 37.24 degrees, okay? So we end up with 6.28 at 37.24. So it's a plus angle. If it was all inductive or mostly inductive, it'd be closer to 90 degrees. If it was more resistive, it'd be closer to zero degrees. If is if they're equal at say 60 hertz, oh, you know what? I'm sorry, I forgot to say I'm at 60 hertz over here. So we're running at 60 hertz. That's an important thing to know to calculate your F, right? <laughs> sorry about that. 
So at 60 hertz, um, if these things were equal, at some frequency they will be equal, right? Then this would be 45 because that'd be equal length. So you'd have a 45 degree angle. Okay. So anyway, yeah, 60 hertz over there. Um, so, okay, guys. So then what we do is we go, okay, let's find out the currents through the circuit. Series circuit, it's 10 volts, 0 degrees, divided by 6.28 ohms, 37.24. So it's 10 divided by 6.28 is 1.59 amps. And 0 divided by 37 is 0 minus. You, you just subtract the angle on the bottom, and so you get minus 37.24. So the current is lagging behind. So that makes sense. Remember Eli the Iceman? For capacitors, the current's ahead of the voltage. Has to charge up the capacitor before you get the voltage. With the inductors, the voltage hits the inductor and it presses current through it, right? And current starts to flow. So inductors are called chokes because they kind of choke off the current. So Eli, so the voltage is at zero. Current is behind it comes after so i think that's why we saw what we did in the simulation there you go hope that made sense hope that kind of helped refresh some of the you know basic math on like a series circuit you can put a c in there you can add you can replace the inductor with the c you can add a c you can start having fun and you can do these simulations you can throw them in the simulation and see if it's comes out right. See what it looks like relative to the math and give you a better feel for how the circuit works. So hopefully that was helpful. Hit the like button if it was. Subscribe if you haven't done so. 80% of people watching videos on my channel are not subscribers. And some people think they are because they've subscribed two or three times. So for some reason, YouTube kicks them off. Maybe it's a way to keep the pay down. I'm not sure. But anyway, if you think you're subscribed, look down below. If it says subscribe, you've been unsubscribed for some reason. So I appreciate subscribing again. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, two big thumbs up to my patrons and two big thumbs up to my YouTube members. And uh, two big thumbs up to Danny for being a, a team member. That's awesome. You can buy me a cup of coffee, hit that super thank you button down below. A beer for a rant Friday. Um, what do you think? like the shirt so i have to check to see if they're still giving them away for free but they were going to uh give one shirt away to one of my members on the channel each time i did a video so i have to see if that's still going on um uh, last time i brought it up no one sent me an email saying they wanted a shirt so if you want a shirt send me an email i'll pick one of you guys but i can't guarantee that uh they'll send you a shirt i have to find out i have to check with them but i think they will and I might have a second shirt at my house I can mail you. But anyway, I'll check in on that. Sorry, guys. Should have done it before the video. But no one uh, took me up on the offer last time. So I just now thought of it as I'm closing out on the video. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.